Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is yet another day that the Lord has allowed us to come together in spirit and truth to worship him and to call upon him. For in the time of trouble, the Bible says that he will hear us and help us. Let us pray. Turn our God, our Father, from whom all blessings flow. We thank you again, Lord, for just waking us up early this morning, Lord, and planting our feet on solid ground. And then, Lord, guiding our footsteps here to the house of prayer one more time just to give your name reverence, honor, glory, and praise. Father, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the precious gift you've given us, Lord. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, those by omission and commission, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to do what is right and pleasing to your eyes, Lord, that you and you alone will get all the honor, glory, and praise. And then, Lord, we ask you to put a, a, a special gift of love in our hearts, Lord, to one mankind everywhere, Lord. You say we ought to love one another just as Christ loved the church and gave himself a ransom for all. So, Father, we plead the blood this morning, Lord, that you can create us a clean heart and renewed right spirit within, Lord, that we do what thus according to the word of God. In your name we pray and give thanks to you again. Let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. Coming this morning with us to proctor the Sunday school lesson is Brother Henry Middleton, a very established man who loves the Lord as much as anybody else does. So he's going to come this morning in his own way to present to you our lesson this morning. Uh, coming from the book of Revelation. Matter of fact, for the entire month of August, we'll be dealing with the book of Revelation. Amen. God bless you. Here goes Brother Middleton. Now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Jerusalem. All of those who are in the sanctuary this morning, and to those who are visiting with us, by way of social media, good morning to you and for those friends who are visiting with us through social media, good morning to you. What a blessed day it is. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Our lesson for August 7th comes from lesson number 10, unit 3, entitled... The Great Hope of the Saints, and our lesson title for today is No More Tears. No More Tears. Our lesson, as Deacon Dean says, comes from the very last book of the Bible, Revelation. Our particular lesson comes from Revelation 21, verses 1 through 9, and again titled No More Tears. By the way, of some background information, the book of Revelation, <clears throat> the last book of the Bible, of the New Testament, and consummation of the biblical prophecy of Revelation, it is a record of prophetic vision given by Jesus Christ to John the Apostle. While he was in prison on the island of Pathmos, a small Aegean island near what is today Turkey, John wrote the book by the express command of Christ the book relates to things which must shortly occur. The book was written about 95 to 96 AD and was addressed to the seven churches of Asia, namely Ephesus, Smyrna, Pegamos, Thyatria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. The book, written at a time when persecution of Christian was rampant and a distinction of Christian, and a distinction of Christian was rampant, and distinct, <clears throat> and a distinct blessing is vouched to the person that reads and those who hear the words of the prophecies. The book is highly symbolic. The theme of it is a conflict of Christ and his church with the anti-Christian power, namely the devil, the beast of the false prophecy, and the ultimate and decisive defeat of the devil. This theme is expressed in the following words from Revelations 11 and 15, and it reads, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the worlds are become the kingdom of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. (laughs) 
The book refers to events chiefly of that of today and is intended to confront the persecuted churches. I have some verses to help, uh, help you to understand that a little better. And let's see if we can... Brother Brown, if you'll do Matthew 24 and 8 and, 20, and 24 and 13, please. Thank you very much. And Sister Williams, 2 Timothy 2 and 8 through 13. Thank you. And Sister Benikin, let me, let me just, I, I, if you do uh, Revelation 2 and 10 and 2 and 14, just those two verses, please. Twenty-one and fourteen, and four. four excuse me. <laughs> Thank you very much. The book, written in apocalyptic writing or revealing type of writing, Revelation consist of a series of vision revealed by the Lord to the Apostle John. These visions are considered by some interpreters to portray the end of the present age and the coming of God's kingdom. And God said he would wipe away every tear from every eye to ensure that there is no reason to shed tears or sorrow. That is... He cannot lie. Did I get someone to do 23 and, uh, numbers 23 and 15 and 19? I guess I didn't. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll go ahead and read it. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said he shall, he not, he's, as he said he shall, he not do it. Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God is not like man, and God cannot lie. Believers' greatest challenge because of this promise is to be intentionally pursued and develop their spirituality. The more spiritual that one becomes like Christ, the believer 
becomes e or his belief becomes easier and they will find it excuse me like Christ believers become the, the easier they will find it to live joyfully and confidently among the chaos of this world the book outline was also constructed by Christ as a follow as follows chapter 1 written about things which is to occur now in chapter 2 and 3, things which will take place. And chapter 4 through 23 is the, the one that we are, we, we are working from today, things that, 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 that will be taking place. The, the book is written in apocalyptic writing and called literature that reveals hidden things revealed to the followers of Christ, what symbols or, or verbiage that you find familiar with yourself that tells a story that only the people who are familiar with, with your symbol, uh, are familiar with. Uh, just by, by way of help, I, I remember when, when we were growing up, or when I was a young man, the first time I saw a symbol like that, that meant something that everybody didn't know, and some of you probably remember this one. Y'all remember that one? It, it caused those guys to be kicked off of the, uh, the Summer Olympic that year. But it, it was symbolic of something that people understood that everybody didn't understand. Another one of these, you remember, can you dig it? And, and th th there was one that especially close to my heart. I think mo much of you remember, much of you know but that I was with the police department for a while. I was a crime scene technician. And I was called to the police department one night to take some pictures of a person who was accused of a crime and to fingerprint him. And, and the young guy, when I walked in, he said to me, hey, dog. <laughs> and, and I go, I, I was aggravated with that, but I didn't say anything to him. And he goes, hey, dog, how you doing? And, and I go, man, I'm not your dog. But, but today, y'all know how pervasive that, that term is. Uh, he said, he said, dog is a good thing. We have a lot of those symbols and, and signs that, that, that we use to convey messages, and that's what this book did for those seven churches in, in Asia. It, it spoke frankly uh, about things that, that, that the Greeks and, 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 and the Romans didn't quite understand, and so they didn't know what they were saying. They, they, were, they were confused when, when, when they heard, when, 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 when they read, or when, when they saw these people talking and, and, and doing the way, way they were doing. And that's, that, that's what the book intent was for. Are there questions or, or, or concerns or comments so far? Am I leaving you totally confused? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Thing. John wrote this by Christ's uh, edict to, 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 to explain to the people who were followers and understood Christ, and they, they, they knew what the signs and, and the symbol, what, 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 what it meant. But the people who, who weren't followers, they, they, they were just confused when, when they saw and heard it. I'm sorry, is there something else? Okay. It's not always clear to you? You're not alone. You're not alone. You go in churches and you find that you don't hear as many sermons. I'll be careful with this one. You don't hear as many sermons coming from Revelation as you do from Matthew and Timothy and John. And it's because a lot of us we really don't understand, but it's, it's not difficult. The, 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 the writer says that the, the closer you are the, the, to, to, to Christ, and, and when, you, when you follow Christ closely, you get to understand it 
better and better, and it becomes a little clearer and clearer to you the closer you are and the, the closer you follow Christ's edict. I, I might add that I'm one who's <laughs> too clear on much of what is written into uh, Revelation myself. The, the more spiritual or the more like Christ you become, the easier again it, it is to live joyously and confidently uh, amid the chaos that, that's occurring. Sin was ultimately defeated by the death and resurrection of Christ paving the way for the day when he would make, a th make things new. John vividly described this renewal in Revelation 21. God makes a new heaven, a new earth, replaces the first one that had vanished. God makes it complete, a complete transformation of everything, the old replaced by a new universe and with new creation, new in character, better than the old, free of sin, sin's contamination. For John, the original audience, God, the, God's trustworthiness was a source of conflict, hope they should be the same for believers today. How can believers, a question, how can believers practically make this world better by addressing things that currently cause pain, suffering, and tears? Anybody want to chew on that one? How can believers practically make this world better by addressing things that currently cause pain, suffering, and tears? We have the pandemic. A lot of believers don't understand that if you follow Jesus Christ, you're going to suffer for his sake. Mm -hmm. But he says, blessed are ye when ye are reviled for my sake. And we can make the world better because he told us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. So we have to witness to the world about Jesus Christ. And in order for people to be saved, the witnesses must have power. You cannot witness to anybody if you don't have no power from above because it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the utterance to speak power or to speak life into people because right now people are dead in their sins and in order for them to be quickened that word quickened means to be alive. Mm -hmm. We have to speak truth to them. And a lot of people are afraid of the truth. I don't want to hear the truth. But Jesus says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. But a lot of us being we, we were bound for so long, we think everything we do is right. But it's not right until the Lord saves your soul and gives you a different outlet, mm -hmm. outlook on life itself. So we have to be witnesses to the world about Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, a lot of people don't believe that the Son of God and God the Son is the same person. All right. And he is the same person. The Son of God is God to son. You cannot separate them because all is God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Thank Spirit. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.
Thank you so much. Anyone else? John says that living like Christ, John taught that we should complain less, persevere, and not worry, and be overcome by fear. When we, when, when, when we do these things, we find that it, 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 it in itself doesn't change, as I said, that the pandemic doesn't change the, uh, the, the, the climate change that, that we have and, and the world, not this country today. It doesn't change that. It, it, it doesn't change that we are in a hurricane season and, and we, we, we're in the path of hurricanes where we are. It doesn't change many of the, uh, of the things that, that are occurring, but it certainly makes us react to them differently. Thank you. <clears throat> this new and qualitative text and the new is the new character is better than the old one where sin is contaminated, where sin contaminated it. Contrasting des destinies. This new heaven and earth is parallel to God's creative work. In the beginning, God pronounced all he had made as good and complete. John is told to record these words spoken as trustworthy and true. The one seated on the throne proclaims the absolute familiarity with his decree and by affirming it is done. Those overcomers, that is, who are faithful, maintain a relationship with Christ will become God's children 
and heirs of the blessing. We, yes, sir. coming down out of heaven that God has created for his people. And in this new Jerusalem, there will be no sin because sin will be eradicated because everything's going to be new. Mm -hmm. Our subject is no more tears. No more tears. Well, there's no more tears, no more crying, no more dying, uh, none of that stuff because everything is new. And God says, I will be your God and you shall be my children. Well, I tell you, that day, that day, on that day, when he comes, we all should be happy. Those of us who are saved, to see a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, now, this earth was created by God, but then sin entered the earth yes, and changed everything that God has made that was good. But lo and behold, hallelujah, on that day that Jesus breaks the sky and the holy city, the word holy means clean, the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven that God created himself for his people. Coming down out of heaven and we're going to see it with our own natural eyes. And that will be the day that we've been waiting for all of our lives. All right. To see God with our own eyes, face to face. And we, he's going to judge us because he's going to ask us what we did while we were down there on that mm -hmm. other place down there he created. And if we tell him we was a witness for him and we were not, that's a bad sign. We have got to be true witnesses for Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's seen in your living, mm -hmm. in your sharing, in your walking, in your talking, in your living. People are to see your sermon every day by you, by you just living this life. And uh, sometimes we mess up, but hallelujah anyhow. All right. God gave us a chance after chance after chance. He is a God of second chances. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we must learn. We got to learn to live for Jesus. Whatever that takes. Sometimes we got to give up what we got to get what we want. If we want Jesus, there's a whole lot of stuff we need to give up. Throw it away. Paul, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man, if any woman All right. be in Christ Jesus, ah, they are a new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new in the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Let me stop before I start preaching. All right. Thank, thank you, Reverend Mack. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Reverend Mack. Hallelujah. Yeah, this, that's how we, we make it a better place, is walking the talk. It's, it's about how we live. It's about praising him in the midst of the pandemic. 
It's about loving him in the midst of your pain and your hurt. Realizing that everybody that sees a good sermon walking won't even understand what they're looking at. It doesn't matter, but it makes a difference because if your belief lines up with your walk, it makes a difference. There's going to be a new Jerusalem. But for those of us who believe him right now, today, you walk like it is a new Jerusalem because you know that he's going to wipe all tears all right. from your eyes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you're hurting right now, what, what you're feeling, what you're going through. Right now, it's already done. It's already done. The victory is already won. That's what Revelations is trying to tell us, that it is already done. But if we know that it's already done, then walk like we know it. It's not all about what we say out of our mouth. It's about how we live. That's all I just want to say. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Anyhow, God. Verse 7 reads, Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, yes. and they will be my children. Mm -hmm. But in order to inherit it, you've got to study Christ, study God, and you've got to follow God's edict. Mm -hmm. And when we, when, when we do that, Others will see what we're doing, and we'll truly be what we're supposed to be, evangelists for God. Yeah, yeah. It's not what we say, it's what we do. Yeah. It's how we do it. And sometimes it's difficult to do that. But nobody said this was going to be an easy walk. Yeah. Yeah. Christ didn't say this was going to be an easy walk. Of all his disciples, only one died a natural death. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. And when we pick up the cross, we pick up everything about Christ. And when the new Jerusalem, um, there's supposed to be no more crying, no more pain. But are you not supposed to admit that not everyone's going to make it? Not everyone um, that you love, because you're supposed to love everyone. Not everyone that you love, family members, maybe even husbands or wives, may not make it um, to the New Jerusalem. Would it be wrong to miss them? It's, you said no more pain, no more sorrow. So you won't miss them? Would it be wrong to? Would it be wise to do what? Would it be wrong to, to how would you, how is it supposed to transition into not missing those that you once loved? Well, I don't think you stop loving somebody because they are not spiritual. I think you love them probably even more when they're not spiritual. But you know, the one thing that I have an issue with is somebody on me day after day about what I should do and how I should change and what I need to do. It is my belief, as my understanding of the word, that we live Christ-like and let people see how we live. Amen. And those who are interested will follow you're right. You're not going to save everybody. I'm not going to save everybody I come in. That I have a desire to. But my job is to, is to be an evangelist so that that person will have something to look at, something to reach for. Not going to heaven. 
And that's a shame. In verse 8 of chapter 21 of Revelation. Mm -hmm. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and some lies, no, all oh, lies, my Lord, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. I think I shared with y'all one time what brim brimstone is. Whenever you see a volcano erupts, mm -hmm. and all the fire and the smoke coming down the side, that's brimstone. You can't out it. All the water in the world cannot out that fire. And when you get caught up in that, you can't get out. Somebody said there's no place to run, there's no place to hide. So your thing is right now, get right with God in the name of Jesus and do it now. If you want to go to heaven, you got to do what you need to do and be obedient to the word of God and be saved by the blood of Jesus. Even after you save y'all, we still fall short. We sin. But we got an advocate. We confess our sins to Jesus, and Jesus goes to the Father on our behalf mm -hmm. and makes groanings and moanings. All right. We can't understand that, but he's doing that on our behalf. And he lets us know you're forgiven. He don't hold no unforgiveness sins like we do down here now. All right. I ain't talking to her. I ain't talking to him. You better stop that foolishness. You can miss heaven by one unforgiven sin. Mm -hmm. One. That's dangerous. Live your sermon every day. Let people see Christ in you. And I'm going to be frank with you. When I look at any one of y'all, I should see the God in you. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Why you say that, Reverend Mac? Because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you cannot separate them. Because they are one, one and three, three and one. Hallelujah for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. You cannot, never, 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 never separate them. And I will never forget this lady said in a church setting while the church was full of people, the devil got more power than all of them. All right. No, he does not because he is God. Excuse me. The Holy Spirit. All right. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Mack. Conversely, stubbornly, many stubbornly choose the opposite path, and as consequences, John lists these as those who are cowards. The rest of this list represent all who sin and are rebellious, rebellious against God instead of receiving the water of life. This group will receive the lake of fire. A contrasting, excuse me, a contrasting fate uh, of these two groups is intensified as, as the importance of two essential things. One is believing in the name of Jesus now, and the other is in the mission to evangelize the lost. His promise of eternal life and eternal death are as trustworthy as his promise to make all things new to the choice of the ones 
or the one or the other is a decision of those who hear the word, the Lord's word. Are there questions or final comments? Good morning, church. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we just ought to rejoice in it. And I'm rejoicing right now because, see, this thing that we're talking about, Rev said, you got to live it. All right. And if, when you live it, your light will outshine the darkness. And sometimes that darkness is even in your own home. But it's not your job to run the darkness away. Because the Lord done declared that where there is light, there is no dark. It will cause even your family members to leave you. You don't leave them. They will leave you because you're showing the light. I'm living that right now today. Because God says, by my loving kindness, do I draw thee nigh. So you don't have to show them anger. You don't have to show them wrath. You just live the life. You just live the life. You be real. Songwriter once says, whatever you do for the master, let it be real. When it's real, everybody can tell. When it's real, everybody will know. Because you're walking in the light. Last week's lesson says, if you love me. What it says? If you love me, right. keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. If you love me, do my will. If you love me, obey my word. When you're doing those things, Satan ain't got no grounds. And he will flee. The Bible tells you that. Didn't he say that? Didn't he say that? All you have to do is your part. And your part is simple. Love me. That's all he said. Love me. Yes, sir. That's all. Y'all be blessed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let us be clear on this. Everyone will not go to the New Jerusalem. Everyone will not see the New Jerusalem. And everyone who sees the New Jerusalem may not follow God's word. And all those, because the New Jerusalem is a prepared place. A prepared people. And if you're not prepared, New Jerusalem isn't for you. It's not for me. But we have that choice to make today. We hope that we'll all make that choice to follow God, God's word to the new Jerusalem. Thank you so much. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Master, we come thankfully to thank you for all that you've done, for where you've brought us from. Master, for, for this very day, Lord, we thank you for this lesson today. We pray that it touches somebody. Yes. We, we pray that, that somebody will be led towards you because of what they heard or what they saw yeah. today. Our prayer is that you touch the, the sick and, and, and the afflicted and all those who are duty, we are duty bound to pray for. And Master, when we've come this way the last time, we can no longer ask these blessings. We ask you just, just for a resting place, someplace in your kingdom, we pray. Amen.